Chaplain Vaughn Bridges. Uh, I'd like to start off by just thinking about Memorial Day. Uh, hopefully everyone's having a good Memorial Day weekend. I just want to take a moment here of silence and remember those who have fought in our nation's wars and uh, who have paid the ultimate sacrifice and, and also those who have gone on before us. Just I'd like to take a moment to, re to, uh, to remember them. And I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for those who have served. If you will, join me in scripture reading in the book of Matthew, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. The scripture says, Jesus speaking, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Today's message is an invitation for rest as we look at these scriptures. Rest is the conversation between what we love to do and how we love to be. Rest is the essence of living, giving and receiving, an act of remembering imaginatively and intellectually, but also psychologically and physically. To rest is to give up on the already exhausted will as the prime motivator of endeavor with its endless outward need to reward itself through established goals. To rest is to give up on worrying and fretting and the sense that there is something wrong with the world unless we are there to correct it. We are rested when we let things alone and let ourselves alone to do what we do best, breathe as the body intended us to breathe, to walk, if you are able, as we were meant to walk. To rest is not self-indulgent. To rest is to prepare to give the best of ourselves and to perhaps, most importantly, arrive at a place where we are able to understand what we have already been given. Delicious words by David White an essayist and poet. Easier said than done, right? To find rest, especially during difficult times. But we see in the scripture that Christ tells us that we can find a true rest in him. I'm reminded, though, of the scripture as I think about the thought of always wanting to do something and not just taking the time to relax and reflect and rest. In Psalm, in Psalm 46.10, the scripture says to cease striving and know that God is God. You hear that? Cease striving. Stop doing. Be still. And that can be difficult at times. As the writer said, to rest is to give up on the already exhausted will and the prime motivator of endeavor. The endless outward need to always be doing something to meet goals. And I know it's important to have goals and to stay busy and to work hard, and that's what we all must do. But as we see what's happened in our country, in the world, things have been kind of put on hold. There's been a halt. And how do we find that rest? How do we go about our business when sometimes our movement is limited? You know, interestingly, even Christ Jesus himself, made a, he made an interesting statement in the book of Matthew, uh, uh, chapter 8, verse 20. And he said that foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to rest, no place to lay his head. But then we see right after that, he actually found a, a place to rest on a boat. He got on the boat, 
went in the water with the disciples to go to the other side. And you know the story. A storm arose. And the disciples, they were worried, concerned. They were afraid that they were going to perish. And they looked to Christ and they said, how can you rest in such a time as this? How can you sleep? And Jesus said, oh, you of little faith. And he looked up and he said, peace, be still. He rebuked the winds and the waves. And then there was calmness and peace. And the disciples were talking amongst themselves. What sort of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey his voice? You know, nobody said it would be easy for people of faith, for spiritual people, religious people, Christians, other world religions. It's, nobody ever said it would be easy to exercise your faith, especially in difficult times. But even during the nice times, let us not forget the good times, to be thankful and to remember what we have already been given. The Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and left untried. Words of G.K. Chesterton. It is difficult at times. It is a challenge for us to exercise our faith and to find rest, especially when there's a lot of issues and problems that we all face. I'm reminded of the scripture in Philippians 4, 6, and maybe you've heard it several times. I tend to struggle with it because I need to put it to practice more, but it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I know that we're not Christ, but he tells us to learn from him, to look to him so that we can find rest. We're not perfect creatures. We will have our difficulties. We will stumble. We will fall. We will lack that true rest at times. But let us look to Christ. People of faith are not promised freedom from illness and calamity but they may experience God's sustaining grace so that they are not crushed or driven to despair. The rest Jesus offers his disciples enables them to overcome a certain measure of fear, anxiety, uncertainty, and meaninglessness in the joy and peace of God's very presence in Jesus Christ. Jesus equates the Christian life with spiritual rest. I want to leave you this morning as we think about an invitation for rest. I want to leave you with three commands from Christ. Number one, when you look at these verses, he says, come. Come as you are. Just as you are. Come to be in Christ. Acknowledge your need for the Savior. And also remember, we're not on our own here. Christ is there to help us. We are not as strong as we think we are. So Jesus says, come to me, those of you, all of you who are burdened, whatever you may be facing at this time, whether it be physically, psychologically, mentally, spiritually, come to Christ. Number two, he says, take, take my yoke upon you. When you think about the word yoke, what does that mean in the scriptures? It's a wooden cross piece that is fastened over the necks of two animals and attached to the plow or cart that they are to pull. I have a picture here, and maybe I can show you. I don't know, but when you think about the yoke, 
Jesus is asking us to be to get beside him and take one end of the yoke so that we can pull together. Jesus means that it is easy and not uncomfortable to wear this yoke. It's an image, an analogy of Christ, that with Christ we can experience relief from the burdens of life. When you look at these first two commands, they represent a crisis. Come to me, take my yoke. And the third one, the command that he tells us is learn. Learn from me. The last one is a process. It's important that we learn to be before we can do. To learn to, to meditate and gaze upon the beauty of Christ. He is gentle and he is humble in heart. And as we understand this, it takes a lifetime to learn, to be a lifelong learner, to always be about, through the sanctification process, to learn who Christ is, to nurture that relationship with him, to love Jesus with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength so that you can learn. As we say in the chaplaincy and the program clinical pastor education, Process learning turns into process living. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become more like him. Colossians 3.10 Come to Christ. Take his yoke and learn how to be Christ-like as we look to the scriptures. Amen.